Hey guys, it's Landon from Redefine Horizons. This is another video in our Field Survey Friday series. So we're working on this set of videos to help folks that want to pass the CST exam. Maybe they don't have as much field experience as they would like. And so we're just kind of going over some basics of, of the equipment that we use in the field of surveyors and what we do with it. Uh, these videos might also help, you know, folks like architects or engineers that just want to learn a little bit more about what it is surveyors do or you know, students or young people that are interested in a career in surveying and just want to want to learn some more about the, the tools that we use. So in the in the last video that we did, we showed you what a total station looked like and a, and a tripod for a total station. So that's just one part of the of the equipment that you need. Um, so the other part of the equipment that you need for total station surveys is you need a rod and a prism. OK, unless you're doing a reflectorless EDM survey, which which we can talk about in a minute. <clears throat> so this is a. Typical survey rod manufactured by Seco. These guys make good gear. Okay, and so I want to just talk about the different parts of the rod. So at the bottom of the rod, you've got a tip. Okay, this is a pointed tip. Okay, you can also get what's called a topo boot, which kind of has a flat cylinder tip. And the reason you have a topo boot is so that the rod doesn't sink into the dirt when you're doing a dirt topo. Okay, but as a general rule, we use a pointed tip like this. Um, that's because we want, you know, accurate measurements on the point. Uh, one of the things you got to you got to be aware of when you're when you're taking care of your equipment is you got to make sure your tips don't get too rounded because they'll these tips wear off and then um, that'll throw off your your height of your inch your rod height by a hundredth or two so you got to just keep an eye on that okay so that's the tip of the rod up here at the top we have the thread the thread that the actual prism goes on which I'll show you in a moment <clears throat> then we have uh, the level bubble okay so that's the level bubble. There's usually at least one level bubble, sometimes there's two. Okay, then we have these two knobs here. Okay, and the reason we have these two knobs, this is what they call a telescoping rod. So the height of the rod is adjustable. Okay, so there's two pieces here that you can use for this rod. Okay, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but the rod is graduated um, with, with the height measurements. So this is in tenths of a foot here, and this is in meters. And so if this rod is adjusted properly, uh, wherever you set the uh, where you set the rod to clamp when you clamp this knob down, <clears throat> that right there says 10.2. If I had this all the way extended, the rod would be 10 foot 10 foot tall. Okay, now this can get out of adjustment. So one of the things you have to do as a field person is you got to uh, make sure that your rod's properly adjusted. That's part of what you use these brass screws here for. You can make the the thread longer or shorter by a few hundredths. To make sure that this that that reads properly but one of the things we always do at the beginning of a survey is we actually get out a tape measure and we'll measure the height of the rod to the center of the prism and make sure that that those numbers read correctly okay? and that's a really important procedure that you need to follow okay so as a general rule you always run the top section of the rod up first then you run up the bottom section okay one of the things you want to be aware of is that the taller your rod gets the more air you have in your measurement to the prism because as the rod goes a little bit out of plumb, uh, you're swinging a bigger circle at the top of a tall rod than you are at the top of a short rod. That's one of the reasons why we have a, a different kind of rod. This is a short rod, okay? Um, and it's not telescopic, so it doesn't change height. It's got one fixed height, okay? But same principle, tip, bubble, thread. Okay, we use this um, if we can't get a tall rod, so if we're trying to shoot under a bush, maybe or under the deck of a building or something under a fence sometimes we'll use this okay the other reason we use this is uh, if we're doing something that needs to be really precise um, uh, usually for construction layout uh, we might use a small rod like this again because it gets us close to the ground and even if the rod's a little bit out of plumb that that error is very small okay so this is a short rod okay here's what a prism looks like this is what we call a regular 30 millimeter prism okay so it's got a cap on it Okay, so here's the prism, the actual prism. It's actually made out of made out of glass. It's a, it's a glass prism. <clears throat> okay, and it's actually shaped by a prism, like a prism, believe it or not. Okay, this is the the back plate to the prism here. You can see it's got these little marks. I don't know what they're called. Somebody can comment in the YouTube video. That'd be great. But it's got these little marks here that help you. This mark helps you line up to measure horizontal angles, and these marks over here help you to line up to get your vertical angle correct. Okay, it's a 30 millimeter offset. We'll talk about that in, uh, I think I'm going to do that um, in another video where I talk about how EDMs work, but it's a 30 millimeter offset that's really important that you have that 
properly set in your total station. Okay, and what, what you do is this just threads onto the rod. Okay. So this is now your rod that you can use for backsight and foresight measurements. I don't have a bipod with me today. They're in the trucks, but you can attach a bipod to this to help level it up. Okay, but when we're doing topo surveys, um, for dirt topos, we don't we don't have the bipod on. So we use the bipod when we're shooting control points or uh, when we're doing what we call hardscape topo, so topo on concrete or pavement that needs to be really accurate. Okay, so the other thing is uh, when you check your rod height, like I talked about, uh, you're going to measure to this mark right here. That tells you where the center of the prism is. So when you put your tape measure at the bottom of the rod and you measure to that mark, it should match the distance or the height that you're getting off your numbers here if your rod's properly properly adjusted. Okay, So that's how the rod works. Now let me show you a different kind of prism. So this is just a regular 30 millimeter prism and uh, you'll notice it's got just one face. So the prism has one face. Okay, so when you're when you're working with a robotic total station you want a prism that the that the robot can track from all sides. So we have a different kind of prism. It's, it's called a 360 prism. So this is what a, a 360 prism looks like. There's different kinds of 360 prisms. Some of them are, are tall and skinny. There's different kinds, but this is the one that we have with our robot. <clears throat> and the reason it's called a 360 prism, as you can see, it's got a prism face facing each direction. Makes it easier for the robotic tool station to track the prism. Goes on top of the rod just like the other prism does. Okay, one of the things that's really important when you have a 360 prism is you are not typically going to have a 30 millimeter offset. You're going to have some kind of weird offset like nine millimeters. So as you switch between the two types of prisms, a 30 millimeter prism that you might have on your backsight, for example, and the 360 prism that's on your foresight, you want to make sure that you're setting that prism offset correctly in your total stations and different total stations have different ways to do that. But that is one important thing you got to remember when you're surveying with a 360 prism. I would also uh, suspect that 360 prisms are not as accurate as a 30 millimeter prism because you've got multiple prism faces there. Okay. So that's what a 360 prism is. All right, so there's kind of a quick rundown of rods and prisms. I know this is going to be a short video, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to end it. And then when the video comes back on, we're going to talk a little bit about how do electronic distance, distance meters actually measure and uh, what is a prism offset and why do you have to worry about prism offsets if you're a field surveyor.